In this video, I'm going to cover the gear you need for your first Tourney X kayak fishing tournament. And I'm going to show you some hacks to avoid common day-ending beginner mistakes. That's coming up, so stay tuned. Hey, it's Roman. Welcome back. Stoked to have you here. If it's your first time, if you want to become a better angler and catch more fish, consider subscribing. Click on the bell notification so you don't miss anything. Welcome to part two of our four-part series, Kayak Fishing Tournament Tips for Beginners, part two. Two. If you haven't signed up for Tourney X yet, go check out part one of this series. I'll put a YouTube card right here or find the link in the description below. That'll walk you through the process of registering for a tournament and signing up for the Tourney X app. I'm going to break this video down into three segments. First, we're going to go over the must-have gear. Second, we're going to go over the recommended gear. Third, I'll teach you some hacks to avoid day-ending beginner mistakes. So here's a must-have gear. Hog trough, tournament identifier, black and white or color, a phone with internet connection, and a camera. So those are the three things that you must have to even participate in an event. Now these are the things I recommend you get in addition to those three things. Pull noodle type foam. You're going to need about two and a half feet of it, so get a long one. One black marker. Glue that works on plastic. Something to write your tourney identifier number on. Two wide rubber bands. About a quarter inch. A 4x3 polyurethane Ziploc bag. If you don't have one, you can also use a snack bag. A snack Ziploc bag. A waterproof housing for your phone. With a lanyard or a float. A backup battery with USB connectors so you can charge your phone. A spare charging cable for your phone. A small drive bag to put your phone in while it's charging if you need it. So that's all the gear on my list. Now we're going to go over the things that could end your day. We have three things that can end your day as far as the tournament goes in submitting your photos. The first one is you lose your hog trough. Once you lose your hog trough, you can't measure your fish, you're done. Uh, the second one is you lose your identifier. Once you lose your identifier, you're done. You can't submit any more fish because you can't take any more pictures of the fish because you can't have the identifier, right? And lastly, your phone. If you lose your phone, if you run out of batteries, that's also a day-ending event. So, you might think to yourself, oh, I'll be okay, I don't need all this extra stuff. But, every time I've been on a, in a tournament, a kayak fishing tournament that's sizable, there's always, you always hear the rumor of the guy who had a lot of fish, who was doing great, and then dropped his phone in the water. Either dropped his phone, or broke his phone, or his phone got wet, or just 100% lost his phone. And that's a terrible feeling to know that you were ahead, and uh, you might have won the event, but your phone was gone. So, uh, different, I have some solutions for that that we're going to go over right now, and that you should implement so you don't have this happen to you. Alright, so for the first day ender, where you lose your hog trough, these things do not float. Fortunately, they have this little groove back here, kind of for reinforcement of the trough arch right but these give you the opportunity to stick stuff in there right so what we're going to do is we're going to take the pool noodle like substance here foam and put it cut it so it fits all along these two grooves and that'll give your hog trough enough, buoyant, enough buoyancy so that if you drop it in the water it won't be an issue because it'll just float and you can recover it and you'll still be in the game All right take your pool noodle and open it up. So you take this pool noodle stuff or, or the pipe insulator and you put it into the that groove. And once it's in there, you can use it to you can use a marker to measure how much to cut. You don't have to put the whole thing in the in the trough, you can just use the first part to measure it. And that basically gives you a guide to how much you need to cut. Now we're going to take these two strips and we're going to put them into these channels on the side of the hog, on the underside of the hog trough. I like to match that curve, right, with the curve of the trough inside. So make the curve on the outside so that so that this side is shorter than that side because because when you look at the trough, this this side wall, this side wall on that side is shorter than the side wall on that side. That one goes deeper because of the curve. So I'll match it up that way. Just kind of put it in all the way down the side. Okay, once you get to the bottom, 
cut off the extra one, the extra, the excess. Cut it at an angle so that when you put it in, it lines up. That. And let's just pop right in. There we go. So back. So now, now that much foam in it should help it float at least long enough for you guys to, for you to grab it before it <laughs> sinks. I'm gonna add a little bit of glue here, 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 and here just in case, but you don't really need it. But I just don't want to mess with it during tournament day, so I'm gonna add my extra insurance. I like to use this little Gorilla, gorilla Glue applicator because you can stick tip in there, squeeze it, and don't have to pull the whole thing out. Let's go right there. All right, I'll set on the glue. All right, so we're almost done with the hog trough. I know that's that's the trick so that it doesn't get lost, but we should also make it a little bit easier on the judges by making these lines a little bit darker. See, right now it's got lines, it's got a uh, quarter inch lines. I'll put it in closer so you can see it. But they're hard to see, they're right here. They're raised so you can feel them, but it's really hard to see in the picture. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna blacken these with a Sharpie. You don't need to do all the lines, I just do the, the, the full inch lines and the half inch lines. You take a marker and you hold it at an angle. You take it and you hold it at an angle so that you're only touching the ridge that indicates that mark. And that way you're not getting any marker on the rest of the trough, only on the part you need, which is the line. It's way easier to do it on the table, but the trick is to keep it flat. You keep the, the tip of the marker nice and flat against the ridge. There it is. Bam. I touched up the numbers too. See, this, is, this is what it looks like with the numbers touched up and the lines uh, traced. So that'll make it easier for the judges to judge your catch and they'll, they're going to thank you for it. <laughs> the next thing that can happen that can ruin your day end of your day actually is losing your identifier so this is paper you print it on paper if it gets wet it comes apart it's done of course so that's where the polyurethane bag comes in put it before you put it in here you write down your number for that morning the identifier number that you can see in the app and you stick it in here and now you have a waterproof and it kind of floats too waterproof floating identifier card and then when you're messing with the fish, it's going to be flopping everywhere. You, you, you can put this on the fish, or what I like to do, what a lot of other people do also, is you can attach it to your hog trough. So it's one less thing to deal with. You already know it's connected. And in this, in this tournament we're doing uh, this weekend, I don't think I'm going to catch anything above 20 inches. I'd be super happy if I caught anything that's legal, like 15 inches. But still, just in case. I'm going to put it right around uh, 20 inches. So that's another thing. Your hog trough when you're measuring your fish is going to be, uh, your fish has to be facing to the left. So, and the picture has got to have the fish, the tail, and your identifier card. So I like to put my identifier card here. And since the hog trough is concaved, um, you need something behind your card so that it has enough to, gri to grip onto. So I like to use. So, I, so this is where I get this extra piece of the pipe insulation. Basically I, I cut it, basically I made the slit so it's open in half and I kind of force it in the middle. So it breaks and now it's nice and well semi-pliable. And then I'll put it, then I'll put that here right at about 20, right? And I'll use the two rubber bands that I talk, told you about earlier. There it is. That's what it looks like. You can easily see your identifiers here and your fish will be on the board. You'll take a picture of it and everything will be awesome. This is crucial here. Having this all packaged up like this is going to save you a ton of time and we'll go over the exact details of how to actually use it and more how to keep it when we get to the video three. So let's move on to the third and final uh, major thing that can go wrong and end the day. That's Securing your phone. There's three things that could take out your phone power water 
I guess water is a, water is a one and a three because it can get wet and ruin your phone. And it can stop working, or you can drop it into the water and you're not gonna get it back. So that's that's three things, right? So we're gonna try to secure against those three things. You want to have a battery pack that you can have a USB connection to in a dry bag. So when your phone goes dead or if you forget to charge it the morning before, whatever, you always have that with you, and you can at least. Uh, get a char get a quick charge off your phone like this one this battery will last forever this battery will charge this iPhone 6 maybe twice uh, I, I can run my GoPro off this thing for like days I've done like two sessions where this lasts for two sessions so on a full charge I'll put the link to this uh, battery on the description below too so you guys can check it out so that's super important That'll, that's one way to keep your phone from dying the second way to keep your phone from dying that's we're gonna go explore the water option is uh, <laughs> a, a waterproof case I like this Thule waterproof case. I bought it at one of these local stores. It's pretty cool. The reason I like it is because this little part that is waterproof also still lets your thumb work. So my thumb will still work to unlock the phone. Uh, and I don't have to mess with it that much. So it makes it easier for me, right? Now we're gonna move on to the third way you can lose your phone, which is for it to drop off your, off your kayak. So I don't use a float system. I use a tether system. So this phone is in my PFD here, or here, and if I'm going to take my phone out of my pocket, I put my hand to the lanyard first before I take it out. That way if I drop it, it's there. Um, some people use a float system on it, so that'll, that'll kind of keep my phone from falling in the water as long as I follow my own procedure of only taking my phone out of my pocket when I have the lanyard through my hand. Okay. So that's how I that's how I would deal with those situations. If you guys have a different way of doing it, that's cool. Do what you have, do whatever works for you. But the worst thing you can do is not address those situations before you get on the water. So use my uh, approach or figure out your own, but figure something out because that's the one thing that you're gonna, that's gonna happen is you're gonna drop your phone in the water. You're gonna <laughs> get your phone wet after the whole day of fishing. You took the time to get out there, get your kayak in the water, and fish, and then the whole day is gonna get ruined when you lose your phone. And not only that. Not only will you lose the tournament and not be able to submit your fish, but you're gonna have a, a, a bad day because you lost your phone. All right, that's enough 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 of a lecture, enough rambling. <laughs> Let's wrap this up. And just to make sure you guys re realize that I made these for you guys. So these, I made you guys a black and white version and a color version that you guys can get and download for free for this tournament or any tournament that is not uh, sanctioned by one of these other organizations. This is just a fun one that you guys can use for the upcoming Mission Bay Tournament, or if I decide to put on tournaments down the road. Possibility, maybe, let me know what you think. You can get these at romancaster.com forward slash identifier. Right, there it is. So go download the PDF, set it to grayscale if you want a black and white print, set it to color if you want a color print, cut it out, and you're gonna be ready for the tournament. In part three of this series, I'm gonna show you how I have my kayak set up and the procedure I use to take fast, accurate photos of my catch submission. I'll put part three in the YouTube card right there. If you want to become a better angler and catch more fish, consider subscribing. Click on the round icon right here. You'll subscribe and I'll continue to share my thoughts and insights to help you catch more fish. All right, I'll see you in part three. Woo!